Hey, I'm Ryan. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to go over a workflow that I made to demonstrate um, some brand new ultra powerful functionality added to Comfy UI um, by Kos Kosinka Dink. He's the author of the Animate Diff nodes, and he has given us the ability to mask LoRa's and use checkpoints as LoRa's. I, I mean, he does a really great job. I'll link to the article, his blog post, uh, where he introduced this stuff to the, the like sort of the core of Comfy UI. Um, and he does a great job explaining it there. But I will show it to you in action with my uh, in conjunction with my nodes. So we're going to make uh, Laura's audio reactive today. As per usual, we're going to be doing some audio reactive stuff. So <clears throat> without further ado, let's uh, start at the beginning, which is somewhere over here, uh, you know, whatever. So we've got, it's like sort of this, I don't know why I set it up this way. I'll probably clean it up a little bit before I post the, the workflow on Civit, but uh, I, I'll mention that I'll, you, you'll be able to find this workflow in the description below. Um, there will be links to the GitHub and to the Civit profile and where you can find all sorts of other cool stuff uh, that I've posted there. Feel free to subscribe to this channel. We're chilling over here and the more the more the merrier. So uh, <clears throat> what I'm doing here is I'm loading a video, okay? I'm loading a video of a boxer that I got from Pexels. I'm getting the width and the height of it so that we can use that down the line. And really, this is kind of the the the, the beginning is we're loading this audio. And this is, uh, you know, royalty free audio I generated with some, uh, you know, it's some AI slop here uh, just just for use uh, on YouTube. So <clears throat> we're loading the audio. We are generating a bunch of empty masks and empty images, just blank images and blank masks, um, according to the length of this audio calculated by the frame rate. And we can use this for a lot of things. You'll see in a minute how we use it, how we use these masks uh, directly later on. So <clears throat> we get these masks and images. Um, also, we separate the audio into its component parts. And I'll link to the tutorial I did on source separation here and audio manipulation with my nodes and in, in comfy ui so we separate <coughs> the instruments we get drums vocals bass and other and the other is everything but the drums vocals and bass and here's where we extract the audio feature and i'll take a moment to mention that the this audio feature is actually interchangeable with many other data sources um, thanks thanks to my node pack so this is a really powerful audio reactivity node pack. It's a great one for your tool chest, but what makes it sort of exceptional and stand out among all the other audio reactive stuff is that instead of audio here, we could have any feature source. So we could use um, motion. We would take a motion feature and say, you know, we could, we could use the motion of the boxer in the video to control the amount of LoRa that is applied. So whenever he takes a swing, you know, the average, um, the average movement in the video will go up and we could use that to turn up the LoRa. Motion is not the only one. There's also proximity, there's MIDI, there's, uh, d you know, brightness, time. You can do them manually. You can draw them. I'm about to add it so you can draw it with a spline. Anyways, uh, but as per usual, I'm going to stick to an audio reactivity example because it's really like it's fun and um, it's a use case that a lot of people actually have in the real world. So we have an audio feature and then uh, you'll see I split it into a few different things here and we're not using all this stuff. I've just I was experimenting. So I set up some variables and it makes it easier down the line. You know, these these set nodes correspond to a get node. So like down the line, you can just like swap out different things and see what the kick does for the, as opposed to the vocals. For instance, this video right here, this, this is the vocals controlling the application of the Laura, the gold Laura. And before, probably before I'm done blabbing at you, it will finish, um, but it will be the drums applying it instead. 
So you, you'll get to see a, a little bit of a difference there. So <clears throat> setting the, a couple of variables here, and what I'm doing is manipulating the feature a little bit. So this is the drum feature. I didn't, I didn't really, I don't think I changed any settings here. I think I just did that to visualize it. So that those are the drums. Um, yep, just, just the bare drums. Here, I'm calling this the kick feature. And that is because I set the feature threshold here to 0.5. So anything like anything lower than 0.5 is completely ignored. So the only things that we're getting are those really hard hits. So anything like a hi-hat or any other little noise is just filtered out by this, by this mixer using this threshold setting. And here, oh yeah, and this is just a, another audio feature, except I'm using the bass as the feature source. And in both cases, we're using the amplitude envelope, but you you know, for vocals, sometimes I find R RMS energy is better, but amplitude envelope works really well. So this is this is all the feature data is. Like it, it, it's just usually values from zero to one, and we can manipulate them after the fact to get them to do exactly what we want. Um, all right, so we've loaded a, a video, we loaded some audio, we extracted features, so we can use them a little bit, a little bit later, and we'll we'll actually get to that right now. So <clears throat> we got the features all set up. Now we need some masks, so we can we can control where these LoRa's and IP adapters are applied by the model. So. Um, in this case, I'm I, I had like pre uh, segmented the boxer like I got I got a mask of the boxer I, I will but you can I'll, I'll enable this before I release the workflow you can just type in here like subject will probably work but if you have something in the video you want to mask you just type it in right here so we've got the mask of the boxer and excuse me. Um, I've set these two variables, the foreground and the background, and we're using that here. So we feed the mask to this flex mask morph, and we also send it, send in the kick feature and this feature pipe. So we're going to use the kick feature to modulate the mask by dilating it. And you can also erode it, open it, close it, whatever. Um, and I've also changed this subtract original setting. Um, this will subtract the original area of the mask. So you can see that effect right here. Because oh. the mask is literally just of the boxer, but we've subtracted the original. So we just get the outline of him and then the dilated mask along with the, the drums. It, you don't have to morph it. There's other. There's a ton of other things you can do with masks. All of these things. Um, you can, These are all different ways to modulate them, and they all have a ton of, little, of settings like, like this one does. Um, we're not using this, but here's an here's an example for you. Emana emanating rings. You can imagine some. You can get some weird effects with that. So this one we are using. Uh, the opacity. So we are modulating the opacity of the mask using the kick feature. And it's actually... So since the kick is like pretty sharp, just like hits like that, you saw the, the graph, you can't really see the effect as well as you could with the vocals, which are a little bit more fluid. But this should give us a cool effect anyways. <clears throat> Alright, so I won't, I won't go heavy into this, but uh, I will link that article, but what we're doing here is we're taking that mask, the opacity mask that we just generated, and we're basically applying all of this stuff to one to the to the brightest part, and then uh, all of this stuff to the inverse of that. So what's really cool is that you can now apply LoRa's to a specific area. You can also apply checkpoints as LoRa's to a specific area. In this case, you know, I'm using Photon twice, but here we could use a model as LoRa and pick any other model. Like we could, we could like make it 
half anime. It's insane. It's insane how powerful this is. Um, maybe I'll do another example sometime soon. So, and of course, I'm also using this uh, IP adapter to, with the... So we're applying that gold Laura, according to the, the drums. And we're also applying this IP adapter according to that dilating mask. You see, we've got mask dilate here. This is the animate diff setup. I'm not going to go over that. We also have the uh, control net. What am I doing? I'm doing depth here. Um, other stuff might work e work better. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's delete that. We don't need it. Delete this. We don't need it. Okay. So here's the first pass. We're going to sample it with a denoise of 0.8. So we're letting some of the original image of the boxer come through. Then we take this latent, upscale it, and sample it again with a far lower denoise because I kind of like where this, this is headed. So we're going to let most of that through and just uh, upscale it and make it a little bit better. So here you go. This is the result. I honestly like the, the uh, vocals better. Pretty cool. Anyways, that'll do it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, again, feel free to subscribe. Check out the Civit AI profile, the GitHub. Give me a star on GitHub uh, if you get a chance. Uh, you know, if you enjoyed it, like the video, whatever, whatever. I'm still Ryan. Bye-bye.